Hi, welcome to Spencerville Academy News Update. I'm Cami Valenzuela. And I'm Sarah Hernandez. We're here to bring you the latest breaking news at SAA. In this segment, we'll be talking about relationships, Agritour, and Coral Fest. As you know, Valentine's Day just passed. We've all been focusing on relationships this month, and so our first segment will be on relationships with Liz. Liz? Hey guys, I'm Liz Bautista. Did you know that you are most likely to meet your future spouse at the highest level of your education? Well, I asked students about their thoughts on dating in high school, like the good things. Uh, the good thing is that, uh, you know, you, you just experience what it's like to date, you know, just get a feel for it so that later on, you know, when you're really dating for real, like before you get married, you know, you have some experience in what to do, not nervous or awkward. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice. Now to get to the bad things about dating in high school. The bad things is that sometimes you can get too attached, and then in college you won't be able to, um, <laughs> and then in college you might already be attached to that person, and then, um, or some, yeah, or also like in high school we're kind of all just growing emotionally, we don't know what's going on, our emotions and feelings and stuff, and so sometimes you can get really hurt, but that's just because you're growing in like, you're learning new things and you're mature. And uh, it really affects you. You can't focus, especially if you go to the same school, because then you see that other person all happy and then you're all mad. What I've done. Well, now that we've talked about the pros and cons, let's see what students say about what they look for in a relationship. Relationship. Um, first, it's got to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got to have a good relationship with Christ and, uh, you know, just listen and, um, you know, just be a good friend, you know. Okay, um, what I look for in a boyfriend uh, is honesty and being able to trust him, definitely, and um, someone that you're able to depend on. Um, also, your best friend. So, if something happens, he can definitely understand your situation. Um, he's not only there to listen to you, but he's also there to help you um, through the hard times. So, I think that's definitely an A okay. Well, now that we've heard from fellow students, let us hear from a well known teacher, Mr. Boyer. Put all of your energy, all of your time into being the best quality person you can be academically athletically musically so every way so that when the time comes for your age group to pair off in marriages it stands to reason the higher higher quality person you are the higher quality person you'll be able to attract to yourself to marry i'm liz bautista reporting for saa news update that was very interesting didn't you spend Valentine's Day with your boo Garrett, Sarah? I sure did. <laughs> and I had a great time, and I hope everyone else did too. This next segment is about a little trip the choir just went on. This was held at Washington Adventist University in Tacoma Park, Maryland. SA Choir was so excited to go, especially because it was closer to school and to home. Wednesday, February 6th at night, the Sabbath morning, February 9th, we experienced brutal rehearsals on the edge of our seats, making sure that everything was perfect. Of course, something wasn't to Dr. Bigham's liking, and he fixed it immediately, not caring whose feelings he hurt. SA Choir felt that they were unprepared and were hiding in the shadows on Wednesday night rehearsals, praying that Dr. Bigham would not see that they were not prepared and didn't know their music. The altos especially had it bad because it seemed as though he liked picking on them. Yeah, something felt lovely until you went to the first measure of the board. But through vigorous rehearsals, sore fingers, eraser sheddings, and sore feet, SA Choir felt as though they could journey on to Thursday and do it all over again. Thursday seemed to drag on forever, says SA Senior. From the looks of it on people's faces, it, it, she seemed pretty accurate. Everybody looked drained from the previous day's activities and did not feel like singing at all. Of course, Dr. Bingham wasn't going to let that fly, so he woke everybody up with the most hated piece, which seemed to be his favorite, Gloria. <laughs> where people say he started to get annoying. Why? Because he's such a perfectionist. Oh, yeah. And they were relieved by the time that they could go to the master classes. 
Two SA students participated in the master class. A master class is basically a voice lesson with bystanders. Sidney Portella and Kata Buscadegui were coached by two professional coaches. The students chose the songs that they performed in the master class. They, um, they spent hours and hours working on these songs, which the vocal coaches corrected in 20 to 30 minutes, polishing and just telling them everything that they needed to do to make it perfect. Of course, it didn't help that Dr. Bingham was staring everybody down and saying, hey, they're correct, follow what they said. There were seven surrounding academies, Shenandoah Valley Academy, Blue Mountain Academy, TA Academy, Highland View, Washington Adventist University, and of course, your very own SAA Choir. It was so many people, it was burning hot. Hearing the mass choir sing was like hearing an eighth of the angels singing. It was a phenomenal, very phenomenal thing to meet people from surrounding schools. Everybody enjoyed having each other's company. The best part about it was that everybody loved this one song. Uh, soon it will be done a lot. Dr. Bingham saw that when everybody was tired of singing, he would pull out this song and everybody would just burst into this random energy. It's like a heat wave just passed by. The high schools went to a field trip to the National Cathedral in DC. It was cool, but also boring. Students couldn't really see what was going on inside. The acoustics in the place were amazing, like a Roman Colosseum. Unlike the Colosseum, the cathedral has these beautiful stained glass windows. The sun was setting and the rays from the sun were just coming in. It was amazing. At the end of the weekend, everything was a major success. The concert from Friday night made it worth it. The concert flew by very fast. It was beautiful. If you ask anybody who was there, they would tell you that the Holy Spirit was in the was inside of the church. It was amazing. This is Kasimi signing out. Back to you, Sarah. That looked like fun. Didn't you go on the Coral Fest trip, Cami? I sure did. It was a blast. <laughs> our last segment features our school's Acro Squad. Now here's Orion with his segment on the Acro Squad tour. Orion? Acro, the art of doing cool flippy things and stuff. I interviewed some people about Acro. So, this is Orion here reporting live. Not live. This is Orion here reporting for Acro. Nick and Daniel, what was your most challenging move? Um, probably last year when I had to do a 4-2-1 and then do a front tuck off. That sounds, that sounds pretty insane. Uh, my most challenging one was doing my front tuck but he still did it anyway, and looked amazing. Nice. How does Acker bring you closer to God? Um, well, like, we're really close to the family. We worship together and everything. And we always have prayer before and after each practice and everything. Uh, who offers you the most support? For me, it would be all my friends and the coach. Holla. Cool, Chevre. What is your least favorite move? Um, I don't know, maybe uh, hurting a basket toss. All right, go, push up the green iron boots. All right, just because you get hit a lot. Hitting and basket tossing. Basket tossing is very extreme, extreme sport. What's the biggest mistake that you've made? The biggest mistake that I've ever made was only last year when I I did my front flip or tried to and I need myself in the face and I got a black eye oh that's a bummer on a more positive note Acro takes a lot of strength, so if you want to do Acro, then join your local gym right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, 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 whoa. Why are you an Acro? Um, because it's a good sport, and I really like it, and it's fun. I'm an acro because of all my friends. It's fun. 
<laughs> okay, what was last year's tour like? Uh, it was really fun. I mean, we had a lot of downtime, but performing at the schools was cool, and we got to like have a chance to really work on our routines. I see. What do you guys do? Uh, we just performed a show for all the schools that we went to. What do you do on your downtime? For on our downtime, we just hung out and just had fun. There was this uh, trampoline. Trampoline. Trampolines are the best. This has been Orion. For now. This has been Ryan reporting. Doses. Well, that's all the time we have for today. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Stay.